Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sleepy Fox Yarn Podcast. My name is Holly. I am your host. I live in, I was going to say California. I haven't lived there in seven years, (laughs) six years, seven years, going on seven years. Um, I live in North Carolina with my family. I have my husband, two kids, cat and a dog. I am also pregnant with baby number three, who's on the way. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Holly Nicole 1316. You can find me on Instagram as Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. <laughs> we do have a group for the podcast, although it is like dormant for about a year, over a year. Um, this is a podcast where I talk about my knitting, my crocheting what I'm hoarding, and the shop updates for Sleepy Fox Yarn Co., which is my hand-dyed yarn company, where I put up yarn, bags, uh, patterns, when I actually design. It's been a long time. (laughs) Um, So yeah, let's hop into it. I've already filmed this once, and I did it on my computer, and the quality was garbage. You could not see anything. (laughs) And I'm trying to get in the habit of not looking at myself because right now I look like I'm looking off into space and trying to look at the little tiny camera on my phone. Um, So I'm sorry if I'm like going back and forth. Um, So yeah, I do not have any FOs this week. I do have a half object, which is... Oh my gosh, that's sh- the color quality so much better. Oh my gosh, everything was washed out and looked like garbage. As you can see, I still have a really long tail that I have to sew in that I haven't yet because, you know, <laughs> lazy. This is Colin's sock. It is knit in um, Knit Picks Felici in the Firefighter color way. Um, this is a 75 superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, 50 gram ball. I am not using a pattern for this. Um, I am just winging it. So this is a 56 stitch cast on, two by two rib, um, straight stockinette, stockinette stitch, a slip stitch heel and then um just you know a normal I don't know if it's a wedge toe I don't know um Kitchener the toe yeah um I just have to say this is a sock blocker from Knit Picks and I absolutely love it it is amazing and it makes showing socks so much prettier than me trying to figure out how to hold a sock so you can see everything. It's just, this is the small size sock blocker. Um, Now, I know this looks huge. It does fit his foot perfectly and there is a lot of stretch in it. So he'll be able to wear it for quite some time. Hopefully. (laughs) Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um... So this I did cuff down, heel flap gusset, Um, yeah. My only complaint is this yarn. It kind of a little bit drove me crazy because as you could see in between the red and gray stripes, the gray, the dark gray is not even. (laughs) I mean, I guess it is because the gray stripes between the red and the light gray are thin, like here and here they're thin, but then on the other side where it goes from, it's like thick, I don't like that. It's really bothering me and I wish it was just all even, but Colin likes it. So yeah, I have started the, second sock which is going to be almost identical 
there's a little bit extra gray on the top of this one, which is fine. They're basically going to be identical, which will be so nice to have a matching pair. So that is where I'm at. This is how much I have left. So plenty to finish his second sock. Um, I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I believe they're loops and thread needles. I got them from Michael's. So yeah, I can pull that off the sock blocker. And then you can see the real size. It's small, it's little, but it has a lot of stretch. So his foot will fit for hopefully a while. I still have ends to sew in because I'm lazy. Um, and this is in my Lila Styles Edgar Allan Poe bag, which is nice, dark, and spooky because we love dark and spooky things here. So next up, we are going into whips. This is in my Naughty Knitting Sacks tote. It's huge. I love it. It's amazing. Um, this is made by Katie, who is the Naughty, Naughty Knitting Sacks. She gifted this to me two years ago because I'm absolutely obsessed with Supernatural. And this bag does not have any naughty in it, but I will show you one that does. <laughs> so in this next one, it is my Astraeus uh, sweater, which I did do cropped. I did finally decide I am gonna do cropped. And I have finished the body of the sweater and I am on the sleeve. So let me see, that's the back. Okay, so here's the front. Super cute, I love it. I can't wait to wear it, even though I probably won't be able to wear it unless I finish it like ASAP. And then I will be able to wear it this winter before, you know, winter's over. <sighs> so I am on the sleeve. As you can see, the, let me see, the color work is a little bit tighter than just the normal stockinette. So what I think I'm going to do, I wasn't initially planning to do any increase, decreases on the arms. I wanted to just have a straight, comfy arm. Um, but seeing as how wide it is, when that goes down to my wrist, it's going to be huge. And I don't want it to be super duper huge. I still want it to be kind of snug around the hands without it being snug all the way down like this sweater or cardigan. Um, sorry if I'm breathing really heavy. I got a wave of nausea all of a sudden. Joy's being pregnant. And sometimes you get random waves of nausea. Holy moly. <laughs> okay. So, and the colors are showing up so much better. So seeing as how big this is, I'm going to do a few decreases that way that when it gets down to the sleeve, it'll be more snug. I might just do a, f so I've already done one decrease. I'm trying to keep track so I can make all my notes on my project page because I have been trying to keep up with my project pages, put down everything I'm doing. So if someone is like, I want that sweater, I want that sock, I want this, I want that. Everything is in my notes. So yeah, I'm going to do a few decreases, then go straight. I may do a couple more closer to the wrist and then cast, do the, the ribbing. And then we still have one sleeve to go and then we are finished with this. These needles are, I think again, um, loops and threads needles. The recommended size that she recommends for the pattern, I got gauge. Her and I, I've noticed knit fairly similarly in tension. So most of the time I can just do my size in her recommended gauge. So typically I don't have an issue. Wow, did 
This is crazy all of a sudden. And I just got a hiccup. Awesome. Um, I did do the optional short row shaping. Um, I'm still hoping those holes will close up and this yarn will bloom and <laughs> it'll be better because I did try this on and honestly, I was really worried with the neckline that it was going to hit me too high up on my throat. And when um, shirts tend to hit me high on the throat, either I don't wear them or if it's a t-shirt, I'll cut the what is that called? The neckline? Like I'll cut that seam or that neckline off to where it hits lower. Thankfully I did the optional short row shaping because the past me was thinking ahead and thinking, okay, we don't like stuff hitting our throat. So when I did the short row shaping, it hits more like here along my collarbone, which is great. It fits amazing. So Yes, the black that I'm using is Haydenville DK in their black colorway. It's just black. Um, and then the lavender, which is actually showing up lavender, is the Haydenville DK Valley Yarns in the lavender colorway. So very self-explanatory. Um, the yarn how much I'm using, I'm gonna guess, I mean, I'm gonna give my best guess on how much I'm using. I have not weighed anything. Uh, needles, all my notes on how long I did it after the pattern um, will be in my project page, notes on Ravelry. I have a hair, a fiber in the back of my throat. And it's making me uh, nauseous. Ugh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Um, so with that being said, that is a whip that I have made significant progress on and I'm hoping to finish it soon because I would love to wear it. I think my goal would have been to wear it on Valentine's Day but we're also not doing anything for Valentine's Day. Just because lockdown and one, it is so busy on Valentine's Day to do anything. And we just like to avoid it. We may order it out. I think that might be it. Because, yeah, we'll order out and bring it home and eat because it's quicker that way. Um, and I would much rather wait at my house than wait out in public right now. Like, no, thank you. I will pass. Yeah. Okay. So that is project number two. Project number three is in my Ravenclaw bag. I am not a Ravenclaw. I am a Gryffindor, but I screwed up on this bag and forgot some of the stitching. So <laughs> it's mine now. Um, I am doing a shop sample slash sock for me. Um, so this is what it looks like. Yeah, those colors are coming out way better. It's a little brighter on screen than it is in person. But this is my sock that I'm doing. It's a 64 inch, not a 64 inch. Oh my God, Lord. That would be a massive sock, 64 inches. 64 stitch sock. I am using the, what is it? Um, I am totally blanking right now. Morning Coffee Socks by Kay Litton, who is Crazy Sock Lady Designs. She has the Crazy, Crazy Sock Lady podcast here on YouTube. Um, so yes, that is the pattern I am following. I started these on February 4th, which I have not gotten a lot of work on. Um, I am using 2.5 millimeter needles on these. Um, these are just like the Knit Picks wood ones. I don't know what they're called. Um, but yes, that is what I'm working on. The 
cuff color is midnight this is my hand dyed yarn so like i said this is going to be a shop sample technically to show how the yarn would knit up in socks so this is midnight which is showing a little bit brighter on screen than it is in person it's a little more muted and navy blue than it is like a bright blue and then this color is celestial which is this this is what it looks like caked up super pretty I love the speckles in this I asked Nick if he would like this sock and he said no it's too girly of a color and I'm like how's that girly I'm like the only color that could be considered girly in here is like the orangey red color and I'm like but it's orangey red like I don't get it so yes that is that colorway um I'm still on the leg which I want to make this pretty long and as you can see it's almost kind of pooling in a way and semi like micro striping almost if you look at it I know that's weird but like yeah so I'm looking at this and I'm trying to keep, I want to keep going to see ultimately what it will look like in a sock. But a part of me is not necessarily a fan of it in this. My first thought with these colorways was to do a shawl. I was like, do a shawl. What? When you're done with your podcast, can you make me noodles? Yes, when I am done with the podcast, I will make you noodles. I'm doing it on my phone instead of the computer. Because the computer, the lighting was garbage and stuff. Um, so yeah. My initial thought with these colorways was to do a shawl. Which I think I should have done. Because like I said, it is kind of pooling and semi-micro striping in some spots. Like here it looks like it's micro striping. But then, you know, when you look here, you can clearly tell it's starting to pool, which means it's going to pool in like a spiral on the sock. But I think I'm still just gonna continue on and do it anyways, because it is a sock yarn. And I know sock yarns are, you know, used for socks, but they're also used for shawls. But most people buy sock yarn to make socks or mittens or a hat. Oh, I should've done a hat. That's what I should've done. Oh, well socks because I want a pair excuse me hiccup a pair of socks and I wanted to try it on 2.5 millimeter needles just because typically when I make it on 2.25 they end up being not tight but tight like I can put the sock on it'll fit and it fits fine but I've noticed that the stitches are stretched tight if that makes sense the sock itself isn't overly tight, but I noticed that the stitches pull more and I'm just like, I don't like the way that looks. It kind of bothers me. So, which is weird because the, eventually the sock gets loose, but the stitches still look stretched out, which makes no sense to me. Like the sock will get looser on my foot as I wear it, but the stitches are still pulled tight like the sock is too tight but it's like twisting on my foot and falling off so I think a part of it is I need to find a better heel or a heel that fits my foot because I am flat-footed I've done the afterthought heel that one fit okay but I noticed it's pulled across my instep a lot and like that's where those stretched out stitches were and I don't like the way that looked it like stressed Almost looked like it was stressing the yarn. I'm doing the heel flap and gusset, but those don't quite fit right either. They're almost too loose. Is it raining? No, it's not. I'm sorry. Squirrel moment. <laughs> my nose ring got caught on my nose. There we go. The heel flap and gusset almost feel too loose. Like, I think maybe I'm doing the heel too long, maybe? I'm making it too wide on the ends. I don't know because my foot is flat. 
So people who are flat footed, what heel do you use on your socks? Because I <laughs> need to know. The heel flap and gusset seem to work great for the kids and Nick. Never an issue, but they just don't fit right on me. So that is project number three. That is a whip. Okay. I'm trying not to like rush. Like I want to talk to you guys, but I've already filmed this podcast once and it was an hour and 13 minutes long and I've missed a lot of stuff. So I'm trying to do this more con concisely. Try to get more to the point and not be so squirrely because this morning it was really hard. It's n almost 10 now. I started, I filmed my first one at seven o'clock this morning, which was probably not the best idea because I wasn't completely awake. <laughs> so this, these are acquisitions as well. Like, so this is hoarding as well as a pattern or not a pattern, a um, whip. So project. Um, I, so I follow Katie, who is the naughty knitting sacks, naughty not the Naughty Knitting Sacks, but Naughty Knitting Sacks. She is out of Cumming, Georgia. Um, Cummings or Cumming or Cummings, Georgia. One of them. Um, there's a reason why her name is Naughty Knitting Sacks. So as you can see from the front, oh, so beautiful. It's a cute Valentine's Day bag with big, beautiful hearts. I love it. It is cute. And then, you know, Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. What do people do on Valentine's Day? They get a little naughty. <laughs> and do bondage. <laughs> I freaking love it. Oh my god. I saw this fabric on her page <gasps> and I fell in love. I was like, oh my god. I have to have it. So yeah. I love it. This is an acquisition. It just came in last night and I was just like, I'm putting my project in it tonight. I have to, it's amazing. If this project bag is still available, I will link it directly below. If not, her shop will be linked below. Everything gets linked down below. Project pages, patterns. I don't link the yarn, but I do put in what the yarn is, the colorway. You just kind of have to find it because I'm not gonna do all that work. Um, but everything else I do link below because I like to, you know, Hey, this is where it's at. So yeah, that is an acquisition, my hoarding, as well as the bag that is holding my whip that I started last night. <laughs> so I am using a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. I don't know what letter that is because I do not use the letter system. It is too confusing to me. Same with knitting needles. I don't use the number system that they have. Like I have no idea if it's a US 1, 2, 3, 65 million. I don't know. I always go by millimeters. That way it is everyone knows the exact size I'm using. <laughs> so I am using the Mandala Baby in the colorway Narnia. And I am making a C2C. Oh, that's coming out really nice. That is showing the colors pretty much spot on. I am making another baby blanket. I can't decide if I like the baby blanket I made for Chloe already, which that's what we're naming her, Chloe. Baby number three. I can't decide if I like the baby blanket I've already made her. I'm still, like, I look at it and I'm like, ooh, it's pretty. But then another part of me is like, is it though? It was fun to make. I don't know. It's one of those things that you finish and you're just like, mm, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's the colorway that I picked, the colorways that I picked, the pattern that I picked. I don't know, but something just, it, 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 
didn't fulfill my, oh, that's a baby blanket urge. You know what I mean? It just, it's not hitting right. Um, I'm sorry for the glare that's happening on my glasses right now. I got a new light for Christmas. Completely forgot I had it on the last podcast. So I'm using it today because it is super gloomy outside. And we're supposed to be getting rain today. Whether or not we do or not is a whole other story. But we're supposed to be getting rain. So I have to have some type of hiccup. Again, lighting. So this is just your basic C to C pattern. There really is no pattern. Like you literally go to YouTube and look up C to C pattern and it'll come up. C to C crochet. Um, the only difference I do is instead of chaining three, I chain two because I don't, my, the one thing I've always hated with C to C is how big the holes can get between them. And seeing as this is going to be a baby blanket and there's going to be little fingers and little toes on them. Um, I don't want big gaping holes. Like I can't really get my fingers through there. So I think we'll be okay. So I'm hoping that when I, I think I'm going to get to the dark pink and then when it trans starts to go to white is when I'll start decreasing and use up the rest of what's here, which is a blue. There's like a little bit of a green in there somewhere. There is a green, yellow, and then back to the orange. I just, maybe it is the colors because this screams baby blanket to me. And I guess that it, it's supposed to because, you know, it's the baby line of mandala. So, yeah, I am just, I started this last night and it is fulfilling my baby dreams right now. <laughs> like, yeah, so that is what I'm working on. That is my fourth project. Now, before we get into acquisitions or hoarding. I have frogged a project, <laughs> which I have frogged. I frogged my temperature blanket and I said, screw it, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so indecisive sometimes. Um, I frogged it because I was already a month behind. I got to row day 16 of January. We are now the, tw Emma, shh. I love you and I love your singing, but not right now, please. She's not gonna stop. We're just gonna have to hear Emma sing. Um, so, okay, sorry, I have to put this away or I'm gonna get distracted. Um, I'm gonna wanna pick it up and start working on it. <laughs> I got to day 16 of January and stopped because I was already playing catch up after day 10 to the point where when it was, I was on day t Emma, I'm podcasting. Can you sing after? I love your singing, but I don't want to have to compete with your singing. Okay. Thank you. Um, she's still singing. <laughs> so at day 10, when I showed it to you guys on the last podcast, I had caught up, but the days went by and next thing you know, it's already like, I think I got, it was like January 25th or something. And I'm like, holy crap, I still haven't done anything. I need to catch up. And it was just this anxiety inducing project. And it was making me feel like I was so far behind that I wouldn't be able to catch up. And I felt like I was trying to constantly catch up. And I hate that. <laughs> it was a project that I would take with me upstairs. I would take with me downstairs. I would take it everywhere with me and I would just stare at it. And I'm like, I'm so far behind, I need to catch up. 
I need to catch up, I need to catch up. Or it's going to become overwhelming. And that's exactly what happened. It became overwhelming. I got a month behind. I just last night, I said, screw it. I'm not going to finish it. Um, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to have a project on the hook that is just going to give me anxiety. Emma, please stop singing. Thank you. You can sing when I'm done. Give me like 30 more minutes. Okay. It was just anxiety inducing. It was stressing me out. So I frogged it. And I will use that yarn for either making a rainbow blanket, which is a good idea, or something I've been wanting to do. I've been seeing the Lolly Lala um, amigurumis, which look like they're pretty much one piece done in one piece with just color changes or like one or an extra two pieces like for antlers or whatever. They're really cute and I want to do one. So I might use the yarn for those. But also I want to get rid of my whips. I have a basket full of whips that are just sitting. I have my Oh, what is it called? Um, I have an, my sea glass racerback tank, which is also by Megan Reagan of the Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. I have her tank on the needles that I would love to finish because I'd love to wear it during the summer. Um, what else? I know I have um, I have quite a few projects that I need to finish. I have a lot of whips sitting that I don't have on my project page. Sorry about the squeaking, that's my mouse. Um, I have a lot of projects that are sitting in bags that I wanna finish, I wanna get rid of. That is my ultimate goal this year, is either I have to frog the projects or finish them, which I have quite a few. So I would like to finish what I can. <laughs> like, um, I know there was the Gingerbread Men by, oh, crud. I can't remember who designed them. But there's Gingerbread Men that I plan to make for the kids. There was Ring Stackers that I plan to make for my niece, who now is probably too old for it. So I'll probably make them for my kid. Uh, my daughter that's going to be here in April. <sighs> um, there's sock projects. There's my tank. There's a couple cardigans I think I started that I never got around to, which I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's just so much. Then I also had plans to make Emma her unicorn sweater, which she probably won't be able to wear until next winter. Colin, the dinosaur sweater. Nick wants a sweater, um, which I was planning on making. That one was the Georgetown Henley, which is a Knit Picks pattern, I believe. I don't remember who the designer was. He really liked that, so I plan on making that for him. So there's a lot hiccups oh my god like I'll just get one random hiccup like I don't <sighs> weird okay so yes there are a lot of projects I want to do projects that I plan but I also want to finish projects Mary Smith was the one that did the gingerbread boy yeah so there's just there's a lot of things that I want to do um whether or not I get to them is a whole other story yeah <laughs> so now with that all said let's get into the acquisitions so you already saw two which was the bag and the yarn the mandala yarn um but I also got two more um so this is the lion brand mandala ombre this one is in the 
balance colorway. So this is the one that Emma picked out. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do a cowl for this. Typically, I typically don't like to buy yarn at this point anymore without having some type of project in mind. Or if I do buy it just because it's pretty, I'll buy one, maybe two. That's it. Um, but I have been, <laughs> this is sad guys. I've been staring at these two colorways. So this is the one that Colin picked and this is um, the Mantra colorway. Also Lion Brand Mandala. I've been staring at these two colorways in Walmart for months, months and months and months and months and months. And every time I walk past, I'm like, no, I don't need it. No, I don't need it. No, I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't want to add to my stash. I don't want it. I caved and I bought them and I figured I would make a cowl. That is my ultimate, I think the, where these are going to turn into. I don't know what cowl. I don't know if it's going to be knit. I don't know if it's going to be crochet, but it's going to be a cowl most likely. Um, I feel like the stripes are too thick for a hat and mitten set. I don't think there is enough yarn here for a scarf. Plus I don't like scarves on kids. I feel like it's a choking hazard, suffocation hazard, basically strangle, strangulation hazard. I don't like them. That's where I'd prefer a cowl because it's already, it's just round. There's no loose ends to pull tight. So yeah, so I'm thinking cowl. They look like boobs. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> But yes, that was, <laughs> I'll put them down. That was my only yarn hoarding. Um, then I did the bag and then I have a cross stitch that I bought that I am absolutely in love with. So I got this from Everything Cross Stitch. Um, it is this pattern right here. It is by Cross Stitch Wonders. The designer is Marcia Manning. It is a 92 stitch by 92 stitch pattern. And it is the year of mugs. I believe this is for this year because when I looked, I didn't see anything after February. And even February wasn't released yet. So I'm thinking these are new to 2021. So I bought this because I am a huge fan of coffee mugs and I think this is super cute. It is a more simple cross stitch. Now, when I've done cross stitches in the past, I have done the full blown picture cross stitches where it is full coverage, color, never finished one, ever. And by the time, <laughs> I got back to them, I had lost the floss between moves. So a lot of them are going to continue to be unfinished. I figured that this one is a lot more simple. There is two, two, four, six, eight. There's only 10 colors here, which as you can see are like thick chunks of colors. It's not a picture where it's like one color here, one color there. There's blocks of color, if that makes sense, which will be easier <laughs> to finish. Um, I would have already started this project. Only problem was, is when I was ordered, when I ordered it, it said that they were all in stock, but I guess when my package was being fulfilled or packaged up, they were missing a color. So I got the Ada cloth, which is a 14 count Ada cloth, 12 by 18, which is way big for this design. But I know that is a thing in cross stitching where you will put a product on a much bigger sheet of cloth sheet. I am not a floss tuber. I have started watching them. But I am not a floss tuber. <laughs> um, so yeah. 
Got the cloth. Got two, four, six, eight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is the white just not, you just don't do the white, you just leave it? No, it looks like it's done. So I don't even have the white either. Well, poo, I'm missing another color. Anyways, one of the colors that we're missing were, I think it is like this lightest blue that is in the handle. So when I was at Walmart buying my, uh, my yarn, I decided to pick up four different blues because I wasn't sure which one it called for. So I was like, I'm just gonna grab four light blues and see which one it is. Turns out it's none of them. So I'm just going to basically say F it and pick one that is not necessarily the exact same as one of these, which they none of them look the same and just fill it in the color um because i want to do this project and it's super cute and i don't think it's going to take me a long time to do and we're already in february so i'm pretty sure february has been released um so yeah that is my only other acquisition I, what i'm almost done have a banana or a fruit to hold you over well then don't complain at me um, so that are, that's my only other acquisition hoarding, my hoardings. Um, yeah, that's it. And I want to start that because like I said, it's already February. So I'm pretty sure the February cup of the month has already come out, <laughs> which I'm not too worried about doing that every month. It's more so I would like to eventually have all 12 cups so I can make a cute little. This thing is really hot. What's hot? The blue thing over here is really hot because I didn't step on it. Um, well, that's the break. That's why. Yeah, and it's probably like breaking. Um, okay, so next. Next up would be shop update. I'm going to try and go a little bit faster because last time. This is the part that took me like 40 minutes, <laughs> which we're already sitting at 40 minutes. So yeah. Uh-oh. One of them's off. So I'll do bags first real quick because there's less of them. So these ones, I only have one of each color. Um, and I just made them flat bags. There's no tab on here there is no tag on here it's just a simple it's not black it is a navy blue and white stripe bag it is flat so my favorite go-to bag for my socks is my lila styles edgar Allan poe bag it's my favorite it is my go-to bag for my socks so i was like you know what i'm going to do two flat bags the rest of them are box bottom and who knows maybe someone likes them now these would have had tabs on them like to hold them or put a key loop thingy on them but as i cut the fabric apparently i cut them differently than normal to where i didn't have enough extra fabric that was wide enough to make one so yeah that was the stripes then I also have this one that's a flat. Um, this one is just anchors. These are lined. So lined white. They are zippers. But they are not interface. So they will not stand up on their own. Um, I like interface bags. But at the same time, I dislike them. Because if I'm trying to just put something in my bag, like my purse. I want it to kind of fold up to be as small as possible so I can fit it in my purse. Um, so I don't interface them. Plus that's like more work and I'm, I'm not a bag maker. 
my overall thing is, you know, not bags. <laughs> it's yarn. Um, but I figured I have a bunch of extra fabric that I'm not currently using. So I figured I would make some bags. These are not the highest quality bags. They are not professional bags. Like I don't claim to be a professional bag maker. This is just something that I can do without it looking like garbage. So this is a boxed bottom bag. This is the Buffalo plaid, black zipper, black lining. Um, and that's that. This is just, these are just single colored bags as well. Like I didn't do the dual color ones. I just, I wanted to keep them more simple. They were quicker to make, just simple, easy, and I really like them. So those are the only ones that I have one of. These ones I have multiples, um, two or three, I don't know. It's on my Etsy. So this is another plaid. It is white, black, and gray checkered is that what this one would be checkered I don't know um white zipper white lining I tend to do single color linings just white or black um just simple box bottom I just like the insides to be more simple sometimes a busy pattern it gets just to be too much sometimes um, so yeah, sorry, my nose is itching really bad and I'm trying not to be like digging in my nose. That's kind of gross. So I'm just trying to like itch it from the outside. <laughs> so this, oh, this color is showing up perfect. This is the galaxy bag, which is Whoa. shimmery. Grandma bags. I haven't made yours yet. A uh, black zipper. Sorry, I was trying to unzip it with my left hand, which is like hard. Black lining. Now this fabric is thicker, so it almost feels like it's interfaced, but it isn't. It's just a nice thick cotton. Um, these ones, I think I have two or three of these. The checkered, I have two, I believe. This is like two or three. And then this is the last bag. I just, I was on a red and navy kick apparently. Red, black, and then navy. Box bottom, zipper, white inside. Like I said, see, like that zipper was much easier because that was my right hand. <laughs> my left hand can't do crap. <laughs> so that is the bags that we have in the shop. On top of the ones that are still in there, um, I do plan on making a little bit more bags when I do shop updates. Just because, like I said, I have a bunch of fabric and I don't know what to do with it all. <laughs> I really don't. So just trying to make use of it for someone else. Um, so yeah, those are the bags the yarn. Okay. So I will do the tonals first. So the first one, I'm going to show you these on our gray Fox base, which is our sock base that is 75, 25 superwash merino and nylon and the Arctic Fox base, which is same wool content, nylon content. It's 75, 25, but it's a DK weight. So it's thicker. Um, so this is rose quartz. Ooh, that's actually showing up really pretty. It's a little lighter. Here, let me see if I turn the light up. Um, if it'll show it a bit better. There we go. So this is rose quartz. It's still looking a lot darker on camera. It is a little lighter, um, not as vibrant, bright. Um, so yeah, so this is on the DK base. 
uh oh video size reached its getting close to reaching its limit this is the fingering weight so there's that one then we have midnight which is showing like these are showing up a lot brighter they're a little bit more muted um here it is on the DK base. Sorry, that's the ties. Her, my I don't know what it is, but my ties always stick out like crazy loose. I don't know how to fix that, which makes my skeins look so sloppy <laughs> in pictures. And I'm like, it's the ties. It's not me, I promise. So this is the fingering. Like this is showing up really vibrant blue and it's more of a navy um and then I don't know we'll see um this is tranquil seas or tranquil sea um this is actually a little bit more Healy than the turquoisey aqua color that you're seeing. Um, this is it on DK. I'm just trying to make sure we don't. And then this is it on fingering. This one is like the, I honestly think is the best saturated of the tonals that I did this time around. It is very, very pretty. Oh my God, I love it. Um, and then let's see, where's my other, okay, so this is a misfit skein. This is supposed to be midnight, same dye pot, way different in color. So this is a misfit skein. Um, and I think that's what I, I'm pretty sure I have this listed on Etsy. Um, so yeah, this is on a fingering weight. This is our gray fox that it's on. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the other skeins just must have soaked up all the color and that one just got left behind. Okay, we're back. So it did cut off, but it, you didn't miss anything. So, Mommy, can I have a soda? no soda. Not at 1030 in the morning. Okay, so this next colorway. Okay, can you put those back? I dropped it. Don't open it. Okay, just leave it on the counter. Don't touch it. Okay, this is hay bale, which is also showing up a little brighter on camera than it is in person. So this is... It on the DK, which it was supposed to be that color, but for some reason it came out way more muted. I wanted this to be like that dark goldish mustard color. And then this is it on fingering, but it ended up being a lot lighter. Like you could see right there, there was a nice, uh, chunk of color so this didn't come out exactly the way I was hoping to but I still think it's a pretty color I'm not a yellow person gold mustardy color person but yeah that's that now I'll do I guess like the variegated slash speckly ones so this one is lightning and this is, I'm going to pull it down a little bit, on our DK base. Now, this is showing up pretty true to color. Um, there is some speckles in there. There's some more here. So there's like gray, uh, aqua, pink um, speckles with the blue and white so that is our DK 
And then this, ignore my ties. This is it on fingering. And you can see like here, there's... Well, don't do that. I'm like, I'm like, like I just, I, I fell down, like earlier, and then I fell down, like. Yeah, you fell down a lot this morning. Okay, so this next color is called Tea Party, which I think out of like the variegated slash speckles, this one is probably my favorite. Um. This is it on DK. Yeah, this is coming up way better than it did earlier. Like, you couldn't even see these colors earlier on the other podcast episode that I filmed. Ooh, she is kicking right now. So as you can see, it's like a really bright, acidy, greenish, yellowy green, which I am normally not a fan of. I don't like acidy, bright, greeny, yellow colors, but this is amazing. And the speckleage, like, oh my God. For real. Okay, so this is it on DK, or our, the fingering. And you can see there's like nice big chunks and speckles. Oh, that's literally showing you nothing. <laughs> They're just amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love this one. I don't know, Emma. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not talking about this right now. I am on the podcast. Okay. This one is called Koi Pond. This is on the fingering base. As you can see, there's like splashes of color in there with this nice bright orange. And then here it is on the DK base, which literally I saw this and I was like, oh my goodness. This reminds me of a koi pond with like the big stuff, orange and white fish with the lily pads and just, oh my goodness, the speckles. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then last in the variegated is celestial. So I showed you what it looked like caked up. This is what it looks like in the skein or the hank. This is the DK. So as you can see, there's more speckles down there. And like, this is pretty true to color. It is a very dark navy color. Maybe a little, so like here it's looking really bright blue and it's definitely more navy. And then here it is on fingering. I don't know what happened here, but it got real loose. Um, but it allows you to see those speckles. Like, look at that. And then more pops of color, speckles, that navy blue. Oh, it's so pretty. So now these are straight speckles. Um, this one is called Vineyard, and this is, which one is this? This is the DK. It is a very wine, wine red color with pops of green and dark purple. I love it. It's so pretty. It kind of also, like, I see vineyard, like first and foremost, but then it kind of also reminds me of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for some reason. And then here it is on f 
fingering. Sorry, brain shorted out for a minute. So like you can see, there's, it's so freaking pretty. Oh my gosh. So last but not least is River Rocks, which on the pictures on Etsy, on Instagram, like my camera could not do this colorway justice, period. Like no matter how hard I tried, like I had to adjust the filter, like and I don't adjust the filter to trick people into seeing a certain color. It's so I can get the most accurate representation of the color. So this is River Rocks in, let me see. This is in the DK. And literally, guys, when I tell you, I just grabbed a bunch of random colors and threw it on this yarn. That's exactly what I did. I grabbed a bunch of colors that I don't typically use, threw it on, and I was like, oh my gosh. And it's like my favorite colorway. Um, this is it on fingering, which, look at those speckles. And like, oh my gosh. Becky oh my god Becky which if you've seen Impractical Jokers you know who says that and he's like one of my favorites too <laughs> like oh my gosh it's so freaking pretty I want to knit with this or crochet with it or something like I want to make something with this but I don't think I have any for me <laughs> So, meow. That is the shop update that happened on January 20th. Um, so, yeah. What? 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 Meow. Um, so, yeah. That is what is currently in the shop right now. We still have plenty left. Um, so... Go on over and get yourself a skein. Are you going to come over and say hi? What you want? Do you want to go outside? Is that what this is? Hmm? Okay, move. Get down. Move, 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 move. <laughs> um, there is... All of the colors are still left in the shop. Um, bags still in the shop, which is weird because most of the stuff, when I posted it, I was expecting to get like some type of traffic, but it seemed like all my traffic right now is coming from super my Supernatural colorways, which was weird because I only have two, but it seems like everybody has been interacting with them like the last two weeks. And I'm like... What about my new stuff? So I think I'm going to go on Etsy and um, reorganize my listings because I feel like when I look on my Etsy, my new colorways, for whatever reason, are not showing up at the top. Um, they're kind of just showing up wherever. So I'm going to go and organize that and put them into better organization kind of right now it's organized by yarn bases which is great see like it's some of them are showing up at top and then some of them are not I want to organize them differently because some of those bases we won't be care I won't I won't be dying on anymore just because it's too many bases like I can't get enough yarn to dye every color on every base. I'm not that big of a yarn company yet um, to do that. And I think I got a little overzealous when I started and just did too much. Too many bases, too many colors on 
different bases. So yeah, two bases that from now on, every colorway will be on both bases, depending on what you want. Um, yeah, so at this point, it's chatter. Um, my nine year wedding anniversary just passed. Nick and I have been married for nine years. We've been together a whole decade now. Um, 10 years. Emma's eighth birthday just passed, which is why her hair was pink because she's been asking to dye her hair. It is a semi-permanent, semi which means it washes out over time. It's not like a chalk or something. Why are you eyeballing me? Ooh, she's moving. Sorry, she's like pushing real hard against my stomach and my bladder and my ribs. <laughs> Um, I am 30 weeks pregnant, so, you know, anywhere from 8 to 11 weeks at this point, we're going to have baby here, which I am ready for, but not ready for. Like, a part of me is sometimes forgets that I'm pregnant until she's, like, beating me up, or I can't breathe because she's pushing against my lungs. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Super Bowl happened. We are Chiefs fans. Um, well, my husband is a Chiefs fan. I just support him. And Nick was very upset that they lost. And he was even more upset that I knew they would lose four days prior. <laughs> um, he was, it was literally one night in bed. And so I don't make this known very much on YouTube, but I am kind of woo-woo. I like tarot cards. I like witchy stuff. It's just me. It's who I am. Um, but four nights before the Super Bowl, I'm laying in bed. He's telling me about how excited he is. He's counting down. He's talking about Brady and Mahomes and how he thinks it's going to play out. And as I'm laying there, I'm like, okay, we start to go to sleep. And out of nowhere, the thought hits, this knowing hits, they're going to lose. I was like, oh no, don't tell me that. Why are you going to tell me that? I don't know if it was the universe, spirit guides, whatever. I was just like, don't tell me that. Why you got to tell me that? Because now if I say something to him, he's going to get mad, which I did say something to him two days before the Super Bowl. So I sat on this info for a little bit for two days and I'm like, they're going to lose. Oh. See, and in my first thing was, I didn't know by how much. I thought it was going to be a close game. Boo, Honestly. Boo, I thought it was going to be a super close game. It was not close. <laughs> and I told Nick two nights before, and I was like, hey, can I tell you something? And he was like, what? And I'm like, you might get upset, but the Chiefs are going to lose. He was furious. How could you tell me something like that? Why would you jinx us? I can't believe you would say something. I'm so excited for this. And now you're just going to like throw that in the mix because a part of me knows that your gut's always right. But then I don't want to believe it's right, but it's probably going to be right. And he's like, if you're right, I'm not going to talk to you for, I'm not talking to you. He was upset. Okay. And then he was having this internal dilemma because typically... My intuition is very good. <laughs> I'm typically right. I would say 90% of the time I'm right. Or I don't listen to my intuition. And then I'm sitting here saying, oh, crap. I knew that was going to happen. I should have listened to my gut. And then he gets mad at me because he's like, woman, why don't you listen to your gut? I don't understand. Why do you do this to yourself? So he was having an internal struggle of if I was right or not, which I ended up being right. They lost by a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, halftime came yeah. and he was is this, is this furious. Crazy? He turned off the Super Bowl. He's like, they're playing like crap. I can't believe this. You were right. You jinxed us. And I'm like, 
I didn't make this happen. I just knew it would happen. It was a knowing. And he's just like, well, you tell your spirit guides or your the universe that they could just not tell you stuff like that. And like, he was just so mad. Can't, hey, shh. I'm almost done. So he was pretty pissed at that. Um, but yeah, that was like the main drama in the house of Super Bowl. He was not happy about it. Um, yeah, I am sitting in a different spot. Normally I'd be sitting like right over here, but that's on the floor and me being 30 weeks pregnant, sitting on the floor. It is not the most comfortable and me trying to get up would have been really bad so we're sitting in front of my bookshelf um that has lots of books has some tarot cards right there bloop, bloop. um so yeah that's pretty much it not much else is going on clearly the kids are home they're always home because i homeschool that's just what we do um that's pretty much it yeah that's all i got so i will let you guys go this podcast is probably well over an hour i will let you go i hope you guys have a wonderful day wonderful week wonderful things i was gonna say thanksgiving <sighs> valentine's day if you celebrate if not happy happy singles day i don't know i don't know um i hope you guys have just a wonderful time and I will see you guys probably in another month I'm I don't know if I've said this in this podcast or not I'm definitely thinking podcasts are gonna be yes I will make it for you in a minute okay I uh I'm gonna try once a month to do podcasts every week every two weeks is too much I can't get enough done now in that time frame. Uh, especially with two kids, third on the way, preparing for that, homeschooling, just keeping on top of housework. Like it was getting to be too much. So thinking once a month, fingers crossed. Um, but that could change in two months from now when baby's born. So I don't know. I'm, I may disappear off the face of the earth again for several months. We'll see. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you guys later. Bye.